afternoon everybody so we're trucking right along on our uh, six liter LS project and I wanted to do kind of a quick uh, review like a mini review can't be a full review because this ain't gonna run for a while but I went ahead and I bought the cheapest pair of s10 LS conversion universal shorty headers that I could find on eBay that had V-band collectors on them. So I ordered a pair from a, a vendor on eBay called Ultimate Products and super fast shipping, no problems with them. Uh, they were 125 bucks. I opened this already, of course. This is, the packaging was really nice. Everything looks like it's really nice. I love doing stuff one-handed. So this is what you get. This is the passenger side, of course. Three-eighths flanges. Uh, these are inch and five-eighths primaries into a two-and-a-half inch collector. So no, these are not made for making huge horsepower. As a matter of fact, they probably don't make any horsepower over a stock truck manifold. Like I said, I wanted V-bands. So these have the V-bands. Comes with the V-banded collector. And O2 sensor bungs in there already. Uh, one thing I did notice, the header collector uh, V-band, they had quite a few little dings and uh, almost like burrs hanging off of them from the dings so I took some time to file that stuff off and made sure that those would be flat. When I pulled the driver's side header out of the package I was just really amazed at how nice these things look for 125 bucks. They easily rival the more expensive offshore speed engineering headers which I love speed engineering. I've got them on several projects including the C5. When I grabbed this header and picked it up and I looked down the flange I was like holy crap I just wasted 125 bucks. I kid you not this header flange it looked like a banana it was bent so much. So of course I'm panicking and I'm like oh man I'm gonna have to take these things to the belt sander. So then I got to poking around online and there was a bunch of threads on LS1 Tech talking about the topic of cheap header flanges and, and being warped from welding and all that. And the most common response that I saw in there was, well, did you try bolting them up to the cylinder head and see what it does? No gasket, just bolt them to the head, make sure you got the right length bolts, and uh, just take a feeler gauge to it. So that's what I did. So I started in the center and just started torquing it, not over tightened. These are tightened to factory specs, which I believe is 18 foot pounds. And then I just went around with a 5,000 feeler gauge, top and bottom, and made sure that I couldn't get this to go in anywhere. And I couldn't. So when I finish install these, I'm gonna put them together with some uh, new GM MLS uh, manifold gaskets. This kit comes with very inexpensive header gaskets. It's not a slam on the seller of these. They're just trying to give you a complete kit. Me personally, I would not use these header bolts. They're just too much of an unknown and they, they don't look like the greatest of quality. But I understand that. Not complaining. So I'm going to switch over to the other camera and we'll put this header on and see how it looks for flatness. Alright, now I got you guys on sticks McGann as Lucky Costa likes to say. I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to try and point you guys at the sunlight coming through the door. Let's see if we can get a look at this other header. Yeah, that's a lot of daylight. 
That's probably every bit of 40, 50 thousandths. These are fully welded on the inside. And then they've just got some uh, like one and a half inch or one and a quarter inch welds. Looks like just across the tops on this one. Like I said the other day when I was messing with the driver's side, I was literally in full panic. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty ugly when you just hold it up there. All right, now that I got you guys pointed in the right direction, that's pretty ugly. That's a pretty good gap. But let's see if this uh, passenger side performs as well as the, um, got myself a brand new package of ICT header bolts. I did learn through experimentation that if you have a bunch of these uh, main cap side bolts from uh, LS engine main caps, it's a perfect header bolt. I just didn't have enough of them, so I had to buy new ones. I do have the plugs in this head to keep the motor somewhat sealed up. So you gotta make sure you're really careful around the plugs, you don't crack one. I'm putting this on with no gasket on purpose. Also on the, on the uh, driver's side, I had no problems getting all the bolts to start. I didn't have to fight any of the holes. Like I said in some of the other videos on this engine, um, we're not trying to make maximum horsepower with this thing. It's still going to be a tire fryer though. Okay, we got all our bolts started. Just going to run them down. Gently. I can see the flange pulling in. This one looks a little deep yet. Click. Click. So yeah, just by eye, it looks like this guy's probably gonna be my only problem child. So this is five thousandths. Yep, that sucks a little bit. I can go all the way through on that guy. But it's possible that a new MLS, MLS gasket might seal. Just this one primary. Checking the bottom side. Uh, bottom side and number two, I can go all the way through with five thousandths. Bottom side of number four is good. So this side I'll probably use a little bit of RTV on it when we finish install it. Just to make sure it doesn't leak. The other side I'm going to go together dry. Okay, let's see how the collectors fit on there. And if they'll clear the engine stand. I can't do a full review on this because this thing's not going to run for probably another two or three months. This is some of the dings that I was talking about. It's like they were just throwing them across the room at the factory. Some pretty nice robot TIG welds on this stuff. Like I said, I'll say it again, it's 125 bucks, so I can't be too irritated with any of this. Looks like this collector has been uh, this collector extension's been scorched a little bit, so we'll have to fix that when we go to put a piece of exhaust pipe on it. And it'll be interesting too to see which way in this vehicle that the O2 sensors want to point the best. Clamps look pretty good. A little bit of rocking on the V-bands. Kind of to be expected though. 
If it's something that I know that I'm not going to be taking apart all the time, I usually put a little tiny film of red RTV on these V-bands. You shouldn't have to, but I'd rather do that than fight with leaks. Okay, we might have problem number two. like there may be a lack of clearance. Clearance? Between the block, the ear of the block, and the header itself. So what I'm going to try doing is backing the header off, not all the way, just loose, and see if I can start this guy. times this is all she'll need. Now what I want to see is if I can tighten this header up and still move that clamp around. Okay, that's good. still get that guy in there. She's all fat and happy. And maybe dumb too. Probably cut these uh, clamps down quite a ways. These things are going to fit between the frame rails. Anyways, like I said, I'm not upset. I'm looking forward to trying these. I wanted an inexpensive header so that if I need to cut them up and modify them or pound dents in them to make them fit, I don't really care. So, 125 bucks, unlimited products on eBay. And that's what you get. So hopefully this helps somebody deciding if they wanna give these a try versus some more expensive offerings. And uh, I will post an update on these on another video in the future after we get this in the chassis. So thanks for checking it out. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, put them down in the comments below. I usually try to get to every single one of them because this channel's not that big. So yeah, we'll uh, catch you all on the next one.